welcome all to the next episode of Vinyl Stallions. Stallions. On today's sit down with the Stallions, we got a great guest. It is Rex Larkman. He is the drummer for Tropodelic, and we are pumped to have him. How are you doing, Rex? Uh, I'm doing great, guys. Thanks for having me. So, our pleasure. And Spruce, how are you doing out there in Cleveland? Man, we are living large here in uh, Spruce Studios, uh, having ourselves a time. But yeah, man, Rex, thank you for coming on. I'm very, very excited to uh, have a great conversation with you. And um, uh, so to give a little background again, how uh, Rex was able to come on, our a friend of mine, Abby Seeley, uh, which is a friend of Rex's as well, because uh, Rex oh. is from the Cleveland area. Uh, but put us in contact and boom, here we are about the dive into a sit down. Easy peasy. One, two, three. Yeah. Thank you, Abby. This is cool. Yeah. Shout out. We'll be definitely getting Abby on here pretty soon, but, uh, yeah, nonetheless, Rex, man. So you are Cleveland born and raised and so is Trop. So, so is all a tropodelic. You guys identify yourself from Cleveland, Ohio. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're Cleveland till we die. All of us. Um, the band started actually at Kent state. Uh, I think it was back in like 2000 eight maybe were the first couple shows uh our singer Rhodes is originally from Pittsburgh uh and then he went to college in Kent State back then and started it as like a hip-hop funk group that then grew into reggae that found a metal guitarist that ended up running into a rapper and now I come with so many different backgrounds of music it's just a very fun eclectic bunch of guys coming together making reggae summer hip-hop and uh it's gone through many iterations over the years since 2008 but Rhodes Matthew Rhodes our lead singer he he started it all okay yeah no I I think that's a good way to describe your music because like whenever I listen to it it's hard for me to put it into one genre like there's always multiple genres that it falls into um, mm -hmm. And so you joined the band in 2017, was it? It was, uh, it was the very beginning, I think, of 2018. Okay. I think my first show was like at the, in, at the end of January in 2018. And uh, yeah, I've been with them since. So how <laughs> did you find them? I grew up in Cleveland and I played in a bunch of different punk bands uh, throughout throughout the years, uh, ones I started, ones I joined, and the high school bands and stuff like that. And I would just always play around at a bunch of different venues. And I grew up in Old Brooklyn, which is a neighborhood in Cleveland. And uh, there was a house venue that I found out about that was just like a few streets away, a few blocks down the street. And I'm just like, wow, we got to play here. It was called Plymouth House. It was run by a bunch of my buddies now who also work with trap or, or play shows with trap like it, it's cool how it all started kind of in a basement for them and us but uh i played one house show with my old band down the street from where i grew up and i met james begin our rapper and he actually went to holy name high school in cleveland i had mutual friends with him i ended up going to the same college and having mutual friends with him and he's just like hey man we need a drummer would you like to audition and I was just like, cool, yeah, I'll give it a shot. I knew of Tropodelic before I joined the band, but I wasn't like, I, was, I wasn't super into it or anything. So I'm glad it kind of, it was kind of a challenge at first, but I just made it my own. Dude, that is a uh, kick ass. I, I mean, just to be able to be asked to like audition for like a band that's been around, like you said, since like 2008 was the first show. I'm sure it was probably in the works many years before that as well uh, with Rhodes. Um, but man, that is awesome. And uh, it was just, it was just a right place, right time situation. Like James was just like, I've heard of you. And I'm just like, I've heard of you. Cool. <laughs> let's right. Ready? Let's make music. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but he, he wasn't, he, James also, uh he was in different bands it's like this a similar story he played he actually opened for trap in his old band which was called glow pop jiggly jams and they were a ska band 
uh what, what a name <laughs> glow, pop, glow pop jiggly jams yeah they're pretty good they're great james okay. was the drummer and then he became the singer and then one day Rhodes, well tropodelic was james's favorite band before he ever joined his favorite like local band back in the day and Rhodes called him up and was like do you know how to play trombone and james is like nah and then Rhodes hung up and they called him back he's just like no no i could learn so James learned how to play trombone, and now he's rapping and doing both with the band. It's really a rich history of <laughs> of, of knowledge and experience with all of these characters in the band. They're great. They're my best friends. And That's have- incredible. Um, so you said you come from a punk rock background. Um, I guess, like, what sort of music, like, if you're not listening to Tropodelic, you know like what sort of stuff are you into i'm very much into i grew up listening to green day foo fighters um i would play guitar hero and rock band and that would kind of be like my musical knowledge of just everything i like my mp3 player mm-hmm. was just our hero 3 soundtrack yeah uh and but I grew into metal and like just having a double bass pedal was the best and just the fastest things I could play. I, now I listen to a lot of hip hop. I listen to a lot of like garage punk. I listen to reggae. Um, like I'm trying to think of like notable artists, but there's just every day is just my Spotify shuffle. I don't know if that's a bad thing or not, but I'm just like, let's just see what comes up and, and feel it out. Well, that's the we best do thing that about all the time. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Because I know some people that, like stick to their playlists. Some people just like stick to certain bands. But I'm just like, I got nine thousand tracks on here. Let's just play it like the radio. Mm-hmm. That's. I mean, Spruce and I, we have this playlist that we've built. We called it Fuckboy Music, and nice. it's approaching three thousand songs. But it gets to the point where you've added so many songs to it where you don't even remember what you've added to it. So you just shuffle it and it's like you just turned on the radio. Yeah, I love I love that. Spotify is the best. I-, I use Spotify like more than YouTube nowadays or like other other apps and social media that I used to. Spotify is cool, though. We, we do a lot with Spotify. Yeah, it's it's definitely my favorite app for listening to music. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I know I've never used Apple Music. I've actually never used a different one. So I'm kind of just, I, I'm just tied to Spotify. I've tried them out. So like I've done the free trial with Apple Music. I've done it with Pandora. Um, there's one other one I've tried out. The only one I haven't is Amazon. Um, mm-hmm. but at least in my experience, Spotify is the best. Definitely. Shut Trustworthy. Up. That release radar can either be the best week of your life or (laughs) or or you just get trashed for months that's what i was experiencing (laughs) yeah recently it's been good though that new red hot chili peppers album i i haven't heard it actually is it is if i i i skip i like skip song to song real quick just to like give it like a a little brief synopsis but we did a live uh uh, album listen like when it came out at midnight we literally just played them together and we posted it out on youtube and whatnot and it was right. fun to be able to just kind of like walk through and obviously johnny boy's back you get the yeah classic lineup but you know it was uh it, it's well worth to give it a listen all right cool yeah i'll come back to it for sure for sure but uh, all right so you're mentioning your uh guitar hero days and the moving to the punk but whatnot but when did you actually start like drumming and getting into that I was a pots and pans kid, like from a child, like from like two years old or however young I was, my parents had footage of me just beating on pots and pans with wooden kitchen utensils. And uh, I didn't pick it back up until second grade. So I was like seven or eight. And I joined like the school band and did hot cross buns on a snare drum. And I got, uh, then I just kind of like dropped it. And then honestly, Guitar Hero and Rock Band brought it all back. Brought it fueled my fire, my obsession with music. As if you, as 
It feels like generation, man. Like we've had, I think like Joe, another kid we talked to on here was like, I got into a rock band, started playing, like, like playing the guitar. Yeah, it it taught me rhythm. It taught me just like how to like play with the song, you know? And that eventually is what I did. I got, uh, my dad got me a Green Day live album, Bullet in the Bible, when I was 10 years old. It was them in England playing. And I just, again, became obsessed with, behind the scenes music things live music punk rock playing along with songs and i remember that's like the full the first full thing i ever learned on drums was that whole live album and i would just play to it and then i just kept going from there started making youtube videos at like 12 years old and then that took over my life for a little bit for sure yeah so actually i wanted to ask you about that because i look through some of your videos and it looks like you play a lot of different kits but there was mm-hmm. one thing i noticed you always seem to have that effect symbol that's like where most drummers would traditionally put a ride symbol so i just sort of wanted to ask you about that symbol like what a little tiny little tiny like splash no, the one with the holes in it oh oh it's usually like right yeah. next to your floor, Tom. Yeah, yeah. That that is uh I forget exactly what it's called. It's it's basically an accent symbol or like a trash symbol, but like a yeah. Stack. Symbols it's like a hi hat, but just so tightly wound that and you can't, you know, clap clamp it with your other foot. But I, I just use it because I listen to a lot of math rock and like hardcore prog rock and they're just hitting weird sounding symbols all the time and i got that one as my kind of little accent guy okay i love i love that symbol honestly maybe my favorite symbol it cracked really bad the other day so but the good thing is it sounds it's supposed to sound trashy so it's okay that it's it still sounds good to me in my opinion even though it's cracked no, it was the one constant I noticed because I was like, sometimes you have like one rack, Tom, sometimes you got two, like, but there's always this symbol like right next to the floor, Tom, no matter what. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, oh, that's awesome. I, I feel like I play a pretty simple setup. It's, all my setups have always been just based around old punk rock drummers, like the one Tom up. I've never actually done like two Toms down. That's kind of like Travis Barkery. But I think Trey Cool, doesn't he have two floor toms as well? He might, he might do two floor toms. I, I've tried it in the past. It's just too far of a reach. I don't know. I'm always down to change up the style. Playing with Tropodelic has made me change so much. Like learning what reggae music is and what the one drop is and just how to play differently than my crazy punk metal side of drumming, you know. It's a good experiment. It makes me a better musician. It makes me a better drummer, I feel like, in the end. And uh, definitely always good to have just different tools in your tool belt. For sure. It is. And uh, and just, like, continuing on, like, these YouTube, dude, that 777 Silk Sonic cover was sick. That was – I really enjoyed that one. And Thank you. Yeah, that, that beat is an in-the-pocket kind of beat. And Anderson Pack as a drummer is, like, one of my new inspirations in music is just like hip hop R and R and B style, and his rapping stuff is inspiring too. Uh, just his flow and his his control of rhythm is is something I want to have in my pocket now. Honestly, dude, no, it's it's big, but also just like the way you're putting these out, you do a really good job with giving those different camera angles, seeing like everything you're hitting at different times, like. Like those are the videos that I'm searching for on YouTube being like, okay, what is actually happening down there with the kick? Oh, sick. Yeah. and you're giving it to me. So thank you. Cool. Cool. I'm going to, I'm going to keep trying. I'll try make some more. Uh, we got a lot of off time in April, so I plan on doing a lot more filming. Awesome. We'll be looking forward to it. Um, but yeah, man, let's, let's move a little bit more into Tropodelic because you sure. guys just released a song on April 8th, which I believe was this past Friday. Uh, with, yeah. Uh, yeah. Nick, Nick Hexum of 311. Yeah. Yeah. That that's, yeah, that's big time. <laughs> it's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. Uh, it's always something that's like working with 311 or just working with Nick is always something that we've talked about 
for as long as I've been in the band, I'm sure years before that as well. And um, like Rhodes grew up with 311. Everyone grew up with 311. I really, I really didn't as much, but I grew an appreciation of them, honestly, from Guitar Hero. Uh, Beautiful Disaster was one of the tracks where I was like, oh. Yeah, that, I think that's their best song. It's my favorite of theirs. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it, it's vibey. It's got like, it's got the reggae element, but it's also metal. Yeah. Yeah. The beginning th- guitar is metal as fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, 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 people have always said we've played with 311 a few times. We've done 311 Day in Vegas, which is like a, a whole week endeavor. We went on a cruise with them. Uh, they have a big concert cruise called the 311 Cruise uh, every other year uh, around March 11th, which is 311 Day. And, uh, we've done some other shows with them, but people have always come up to us and been like, you guys are basically like 311. It's like a weird mix of reggae and just summertime feel good metal hip hop. And I don't know, people always draw comparisons between us and them. So it's finally cool to, you know, say we've, we've worked with them and have a product to show people. And I love the song. I think it's maybe is our most triumphant, almost stadium rocker, style song it's fun to play live we only we've only done it once <laughs> so far really? dude yeah, yeah there's a lot of voices on it like you said triumphant's a good word like it's big yeah um i really enjoyed that one and like but you've also had so you were on the uh of illusion album in 2020 a yeah. lot of yeah. different uh features as well i mean you got like Swayze on here the dirty heads like these are all bands that i'm like recognizing like dang you got them on your album and yeah like, that was one thing i just noticed in general is you guys like to have like a lot of guest artists guest singers um yeah, yeah. it that kind of came along with uh we moved i'm trying to think i think it was 2019 we moved record labels and we are part of ineffable records um and they uh have dirty heads on their record label they have a lot of connections and they kind of drove us into this idea of trying to find features through the scene and just see who who works out for songs and stuff and it's cool because like you run into you tour with people and you meet them and we get together as a band and we're like, who, who do we think could kill it on this track? Who do we think could put a really dope verse on this track? And even though all the time, maybe we're not recording in the same place, we're in communication with them. And it's, it's awesome to like get crazy features like Crazy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony on a song and Prof, who's like my favorite rapper. Yeah, uh, damn, that's awesome. They're both, they're both on Neighborhood. And uh, it's just, and they keep, both kill it too. And it's like, damn, we did this together. This is dope. This is forever in stone on, on everywhere music is sold that, you know, we work with dope people and it's exciting, honestly. Yeah. Well, especially bone thugs and harmony, like you got the Cleveland connection. Definitely. Definitely. That's that. That was really cool with a song called neighborhood. It was, that was our quarantine song. Honestly, that was the first song we wrote after everyone was you know quarantined back in 2020 and stuff and it was just the lyrics roads killed i'm i'm feeling hold up i'm going nuts like it's just all about trying to like break out of this period where music just stopped and like you know it's cool to have our first release from that be with a cleveland legend like crazy bone and then a minnesota legend prof is my favorite um, it's so cool to say that we we got a track with him. Shout out! That is very very cool uh, all around. Um, and you kind of mentioned a little bit earlier. I don't even know if we've started this yet, but uh, there might be an album in the works. Uh, you guys, mm-hmm. uh, so are you in the process of recording that? Finish that? Where are we at? We're uh, we're currently mixing and doing things with track listing and album artwork and working with different artists and our label trying to get together uh the final pieces and parts to make it perfect uh over the last few months i think i think the last day of recording was in december or maybe january and then since then it's just been fine tuning listening to the album so many times (laughs) i i i 
I've listened to these songs more than any other project I've worked on, any personal project or anything. Uh, and I still like it, which is kind of why I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about it. Because sometimes after months of listening, it's just like, God damn it. I never want to hear these songs again. <laughs> but, uh, but I think this is our best piece of work, like a full, complete package of an album. Uh, that we've put more hours into than any other other album too, and a lot of artists probably say that and stuff. But this this one's gonna be crazy. It's cool. Also, so, dope features and and yeah. rap songs and pop reggae songs and everything you could expect from what Tropidelic is. Beautiful. And we're uh, and you're hoping to have it out by like this year or? Yeah, we're shooting yeah. for summer. Beautiful. Could not ask for a better time for some tropidelic music in my life. Yeah, I'll be, right. I'll be excited. Sure. And and uh, so, do you guys have a tour at all planned or anything uh, for, for the yeah. rest of the year? Yeah, we're we're starting to get the rest of the year together. A lot of festivals in the summer. We have our music festival. It's a uh, called Everwild. Uh, it's just got moved to Legend Valley in near Columbus. Yeah, yeah. Thornville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll have we'll have the dinosaur there. Yeah. Maybe dinosaurs because <laughs> they do a festival called Lost Lands there and they have a bunch of like life size dinosaurs and stuff. But uh yeah, Everwild August, I think it's uh twelfth and the thirteenth. And we got Dirty Heads on there, a bunch of our friends throughout the scene, bands like Hyrie, uh Article Sound System, who actually was the the Dua Lipa lawsuit i don't know if that's a good thing to say or a bad thing to say it's it's wild pr they're good people they're good people but that was some juicy news where you just open your your laptop in the morning and see your homies on billboard and stuff Dude, but they'll oh, be that's crazy, <laughs> that's crazy. They'll, be, they'll be at everwild uh and it'll be a crazy time first time ever at that venue but second year for everwild as a festival and having dirty heads is like one of the coolest things to bring to Cleveland or Columbus, you know, yeah, it's kind of like people travel for Thornville though. Like I like there's a festival Our uh, we love jam bands, like pigeons playing ping pong and goose and stuff. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think they put on their like dome fest, but they just moved it to Thornville this summer. So cool. uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a great, I honestly haven't been there personally, but I've heard great, great things and the dinos. Yeah. So, yeah, right. Dinosaurs. I need to see the dinos. <laughs> yeah. So uh, other than that, summertime, uh, we, we've got a tour coming up in May with Iration and Cashed Out, uh, two sick reggae, funk, funky hip hop style uh, groups. They uh, were starting in Denver, I know, on I think it's May 5th. And then we're going to make our way through the Midwest a bit. Uh, hitting Columbus and stuff. Uh, I think Cincinnati as well when it comes to Ohio dates. But um, yeah, it should be a great summer. It's it's going to be busy. Our busy season is definitely when the sun's out in these in these <laughs> belt towns. Oh, Torrey okay. Buffalo in the winter sucks. Or like New York. Or... <laughs> Surely you've got a Cleveland date in there too, right? We really don't play uh, – well, we got – okay, you're right. Good transition in May. It's not Cleveland, but it's uh, Nelson's Ledges, uh, the quarry. Uh, we're playing there. We have our other music festival. It's called Sunny Days. We do one in the spring, uh, and I think that's uh, May 21st is – we'll be playing. And then the 20th, we'll also have music. I'm pretty sure Iration is going to be doing that that day too. Uh, but, yeah, Sunny Days Music Festival, it's – probably the biggest one of the biggest shows we throw all year we do like uh we do that and then we have everwild in august and then we throw a new year's eve party uh every year at the house of blues okay. that'll probably next major cleveland show but nelson's ledges is like it's in cuyahoga falls area it's not too far out from cleveland and that's gonna be that's gonna be awesome i'm excited for that that's the most local show coming up in May. Okay. Um, yeah, and since we're talking about touring and shows and all that, so let me get the most 
uh, bizarre or obscure thing that you've seen at a show, and then also your favorite venue to play at. Okay. I'm going to answer real quick because I just thought of it as, as bizarre. Bizarre is the perfect word. It came up in my Snapchat memories. Uh, it's from this, like a story from like three years ago. We were in Chicago at a venue called, I think it's Beat Kitchen. It's kind of just like a, like a cement box, you know, it's not, mm -hmm. not anything too much. Uh, but some fan met us there when we were getting there for load in and they gave Derek a, a 100, Derek is our trumpet player. They gave him a 100 year old duck egg. And there were a few in there. <laughs> like, <laughs> what do you begin to say? <laughs> it had it had a picture, a sticker of Gollum or Schmeagle from Lord of the Rings, but with Derek's face. <laughs> and then and then there were just like three to four like greenish kind of spotted dinosaur -y looking eggs. And uh and Derek opened it up oh i think he might have taken a bite i i'm just gonna assume he took a bite of one but it was like oh <laughs> green on the side and disgusting they smelled rotten it was miserable but he's running around with this half open hundred year old duck egg blowing the smell at our bass player pegs who was just losing his mind because it was so disgusting and that that uh yeah derek our trumpet player he's, he's a crazy dude and that was one of the most bizarre things I think I've seen in a while. Well, not in a while. It was a while ago. But um, favorite venue, uh, <laughs> Tampa, Florida, uh, St. Petersburg. It's a venue called Janice Live. That, uh, that's probably my favorite venue. It's this big, open, outdoor, almost looks like kind of like a town square or like a block party. There's like apartments literally next to where we're playing, like behind the kit. Like people just live in this like apartment building. And every time we play there, it's like 1500 of our coolest friends that we've ever made in Florida, just losing their minds. It's like $5 tickets too, or, or some sort of deal that they run there sometimes. And just St. Petersburg as a city is super dope too. Tampa, St. Pete area. Bizarre stuff happens there too though. I can I'll tell you that every, every night it's, it's <laughs> It's bizarre. Still, so that one takes the cake, though. Cause, I mean, we usually like to ask every guest that question, and I don't think any of the stories <laughs> have came close to that one. <laughs> awesome. Cool. That's what we love to hear. And that is hilarious. I have, video of it too. I have video of it, too. <laughs> I can say, guys, I don't know if we can use it, but I'll have to ask someone, but I can show you. Well, yeah, yeah, I would kill to see that. Yeah, um, that's wild. <laughs> but uh, I mean, so you guys, dude, you guys br bring the energy at your shows, man. You, like I was watching, I think it was the Bunbury Festival or something, twenty nineteen. Oh, yeah. And like you guys were just uh, like going so hard, like like the horn section as well was just like jumping around. Like you guys really do bring that energy. Yeah, um, thank you, thank you. MGK actually played right after us on that stage that year. And it was just like, I wanted to go fucking ham regardless. I mean, AWOL Nation was also playing that night. Fall Out Boy was on the show. It was like the coolest like cast of bands on a, on a festival that I had played at the time. And it was just like, yeah, we're going hard and we're gonna make this sick. And that hands down one of my favorite shows still. And I'm glad the entire thing is recorded. Yeah. Uh, on youtube I, I go back to that sometimes i'm just like sick that was a good time for ohio you know exactly no absolutely it, that was awesome and so i i tried to f find a video i i, I could have dug a little bit deeper but abby was telling me at some shows because you were traditionally in a band like a drummer so do you have a kit that you will like walk around with is that a thing you do yeah, yeah so we do a whole marching band like section of the show it's like a, a quick little side thing near the end but um when i was in high school at ignatius i i played tenor drums the quads in the marching mm -hmm. band and uh james our rapper he happened to also play in drumline 
uh, when he was in high school at Holy Name. And then uh, Derek, our trumpet player, grew up playing tuba. And we were like, all right, we need a bass player. And then <laughs> our bass player, Pags, we got a marching bass drum and learned how to play bass. Then we hooked up like a, a mic to it just to make it like every time you hit it, it make 808 sounds. And you got yourself a drum line. Dude, that is awesome. I always like, like with concerts in general, I always say you got to give people one thing to remember, just one. It doesn't have to be anything. And that would stick with me like none other because I've never seen that before. And that's, that's unique as shit. And, and just fantastic. You're like, okay, so you played this, you played this. Oh, okay. Basis. Boom drum line yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but pags pags picked up the our bass player's name is pags and he picked up the marching bass drum so well he's like he's a tall dude too big guy so just all of us like in unison just moving around the stage with them is is my favorite part of the show and like you said it's it's very much a uh like attention getter like that's my part. I see everyone take out their phones and I'm like, fuck yeah, this is what we do. Show your friends. And, I'm and, and, <laughs> and for as a drummer, out to the show, we'll do it again. <laughs> and like, we, we, yeah, uh, go ahead. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm just commenting like uh, from a drummer standpoint, specifically, like you're stuck behind that kit, the whole show. Usually I couldn't even imagine you being like, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a fun part. Like we hit the last note of that, of the song before it, and I run around the drums and I get backstage and I just harness up and I'm like, I'll, I never thought I would still be doing marching band drums uh, this far into my career, but it's followed me somehow. Walking around cities like at Loden, we'll just be in downtown Chicago and I'll just be like walking with tenor drums through the streets, <laughs> like the back of the venue. It's so fun. It's crazy. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, that part that part's fun. We hope to evolve it a lot more in the future. We're working on stuff, but um, yeah, definitely a highlight of our live show. There's a lot of dancing. There's a lot of crazy things going on. High kicks from our trumpet player. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I I, I remember the trumpet player jumping up and down away. And he says he raps as well. Uh, so the dude with the glasses. Uh, james he plays trombone or trombone and that's yes that's what it was. the longer yeah the one with the uh and then derek plays trumpet and derek just dances around like crazy he's a brilliant singer too he does backup but the other guy the shorter one james he uh he raps and he's been rapping for the band uh since the, uh 2015 maybe maybe a little bit before that uh the first release he was on i think was police state the ep uh and he was only 18 when he joined the band too. I was 21 when I joined. So we were some youngins. Yeah, that's that's impressive just to be playing out that much when you're that young. Like that not a lot of bands get to do that. Yeah, I mean they've just Tropidox has been a driving force in the Cleveland in like whole Northeast Ohio now further than that, you know, music world. I remember one of the first things Rhodes, our singer, told me that he ever did for Tropidelic was they printed out 10,000 uh, copies of their first record and just handed it out all over Kent, all 10,000 albums. Like, they were grassroots from the start. Uh, and by the time I joined, the band had already been a thing for like eight to 10 years or something. So they had the, the like foundation. And since then, we've done some crazy um, years of touring a lot a lot of shows i'm in like a normal year we'll do 150 to 200 shows oh wow yeah and then covid kind of stopped that but things are picking up especially for the rest of this year it's it's gonna be awesome do you would you say you prefer to play indoor or outdoor venues just in general outdoors is a blast and it's something i always thought of as a kid too it was like a goal of mine it was like okay we're gonna we're gonna play outdoors and or we're gonna play outdoors at warp tour and we actually ended up doing warp tour the last one in 2018 and this this is what i'm getting at it's like i love playing outdoors but that we did six shows of warp tour and it was the best and worst 
part of my music career, it was just hectic and hot and chaos. Like everyone was just fighting for merch spots. It was literally like tour boot camp. Like to this day, I think we've never done a crazier few shows than Warp Tour. Uh, but it depends where we are, honestly. If I'm outside on a beach, then hell yeah, by the water. That's an amazing time to play. But tiny club shows in Chicago can be some of the most hype crowd response experiences that we have. So it really, I guess, depends on where we're at, mostly. mostly. Right now, I'd love to play outside. You know, I, I, spring, summer coming along. I'm excited for some some big outdoor festivals and stuff. It's, it's going to be fun. It's been a long winter of wearing hoodies on stage and then getting too hot. You know what I mean? It's just like shirts off to be outside. It's, it's the Cleveland way right now. These next two months, April and May, we are just clawing at any sort of 50 degree weather and wearing shorts. outside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's getting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll be talking about this in a, in a month again. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, so yeah. So Rhodes uh, was one of the founders of the band. It, uh, when you guys are creating, so like with this new album, was it gen- like so? Is generally like one person brings an idea to it? Is Rhodes kind of uh, bringing ideas that he makes, or h- h- how is the process with that with a band with such longevity? But you join him within the last what is it now four years five years yeah. uh every album i think i've been a part of in the band has been like slightly different the first record i was on with chopadelic was called here in the heights that came out in 2019 and that was like full band like we played all we wrote all the songs in the basement like together like or at like sound checks or different shows and stuff and the ideas kind of like came organically and that that's one way to write an album and it was a great time and I think we made some good stuff but the newer albums uh, of Illusion and then this one in particular we worked in the studio with our buddy Chris DeCola who is a Cleveland guy he's from he went to Walsh so a little bit south of Cleveland Um, and he's been working with James's best friend from college and now he is our like main producer and we do a lot of sitting down in the studio together and like tracking out drum beats and like hip hop beats and like finding sounds opposed to like getting behind the kit kind of all together in one place. It's more or less like we book studio time. We all come in with ideas. Like we'll write, I have uh, so many uh, voice memos on my phone of just like driving wherever and just humming out a, a beat I hear or something. And then Rhodes has those too. And Bobby actually was the one who did a majority of falling down. He kind of came up with the baseline idea for falling down. And, um, and then that just kind of like, just kept getting things added on to it. It was like, all right, I'm going to add live drums. Now we have like a logic beat, but I want this to sound big with the proper symbols and big drum tones. I wanted to go like Phil Collins with some of my drumming producing and like really get some cool, tom sounds that sound a little bit you know like islandy but still like in the reggae world but heavy heavy hitting we often talk about imagine dragons and just how they do like their big sounding operatic songs and falling down is kind of what that came from or just like all of us talking about that all the time trying to make something big um but yeah, other songs Derek wrote on this record. Uh, other songs, you know, it was like Rhodes and I and Pags making a beat at Soundcheck and then that turning into probably the one of my favorite hip hop songs we've ever made. Like as a band, it, it's Rhodes' track. So I'll say that much. Rhodes, is, Rhodes has got some sick verses in it. And I don't know, it's still everyone's input. It's still like we've got a group message where we are constantly talking together about ideas and mixes and things um this one was written this one started we started writing even before evolution was out uh yeah so it's been a long time on some of these songs but i still like them so i'm stoked to show more people 
I, I can imagine at this stage of an album making process, like you just said, like I just want people, like someone else to hear this <laughs> and just yeah. be able yeah. to talk about it freely and just like, uh, but it's also fun on the other aspect. Like, like, cause us as fans, we're like, give it to us. Like, <laughs> but you keep building it up, building it up. So uh, yeah, no, that is, that's awesome. Thank you for that input. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fun. I mean, we're already working on the next next record now too. We're just constantly writing, uh, and just being in the studio, and we're always we got a lot of rehearsal coming up for this, these next few tours. So we're like taking some of the songs on the new album, and like what we've been doing lately is because a lot of the newer songs were made and produced in more of a hip hop realm in the studio uh some parts work for our live show and then other parts we practice it out and we're like i don't know if that's gonna work so we've been taking those songs and like remaking them as a band now and like how the hell do we make this slap like the rest of our live set we don't want stinkers we don't want like lulls like the song may be awesome on recording but when it comes to all of us getting together and like really trying to make it line up with our other discography we're we're like reworking them to make them cooler for a live performance. And I love that too, because I just go nuts now. It's like, I was there when the beat was made for the recording, but I am I do a lot of things different live than I would making a beat in the studio. Oh yeah, we are big, like we, we've talked about that so many times on the show, how a song is never done from just the recording as well. You can evolve it into whatever you want it to be. And yeah. it's, and that, and yeah, that's a kick-ass part of music. And again, playing it out live. Um, that's awesome, man. Uh, like, I'm very, very excited I, to not only do that, but I'm, I will make sure to see you guys over there at Nelson Ledges. And you said that's in May? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's May 20th. Uh, first okay. that friday saturday all right yeah I'll probably figure out something for you guys too if, yeah, man. if figure out tickets i'd love to have you guys there awesome we would yeah, <laughs> yeah um actually yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure i'm in cleveland that weekend so yeah I, I don't live in cleveland um i live in toledo suburb of toledo called holland i mean okay. i'm originally from cleveland too got got the Cavs hat um so i make it over there quite a bit um yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure i'm in cleveland that weekend let's go yeah that that show's gonna be awesome a lot of a lot of new tracks new songs will probably be playing there that won't be out at the time but we've been we've been working on them beautiful beautiful awesome well again rex man i very much appreciate you coming on uh been a pleasure uh i don't know just chatting up hearing your stories um yeah and yeah, man, we'll definitely, yeah, like I said, touch base and we'll have you on. Hopefully we'll have some more members on as well, because you got a great, great uh, crew over there, man. And it seems like you guys are just having fun with it. And that's the beauty. The, what I love seeing in music and people creating it. It's like, that's what it's about at the end of the day. So thank you. Not, yeah. It's doing the music, but it's also the banter and the brotherhood of just living on the road. That's, that's some of my favorite parts of touring is just getting on the bus you know not seeing my trumpet player Derek McBride in some weeks and then him just talking about some you know just in Florida doing stuff with iguanas and fish and shark just crazy horror <laughs> stuff it's it's a wild cast of characters to live with and I, I love them all that is awesome all right well shit club you got any more for uh, Mr. Rex um, just you Cavs fan, you about to watch this Nets Cavs game? Yeah, I think my roommate Chad just got home. We're about to go either to a bar or hit, hit somewhere up to watch it. Hey, I might be going to Plank Road. Uh, <laughs> they need us. I think they're losing by 13, so. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but. Yeah. All right, let's get ourselves some beers and let's watch some basketball. Yeah, the Stallions. Yeah. The Stallions, us three will bring back. Yeah. The uh, and speaking of that, Rex, we always close out our podcast by name like a bunch of stallions, but let's do a, a little bit of a sign out here. So my name is Spruce. I'm Clap. I'm Rex. And, and this, this was Vital Stallions. Vital stallions. <laughs> <laughs>